Hello guys and welcome back to our countdown to Christmas. Today is the 17th of December. We've got another video for you. And now yesterday we did the Tri-Praetorians going up against the Canoptic Acanthrite. So if you missed that video, check that out in the playlist or in the top right of your screen now. Also guys, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video and select one of these units at the end of the video to enter for our giveaway for the Combat Patrol box. Right, for today's video we are readdressing a unit that we've already done in this series but I thought we need to do this comparison today. So we're going to be going with a Ghost Arc with 10 Necron Warriors inside the Ghost Arc going up against 20 Necron Warriors without the Ghost Arc. Right, so a Ghost Arc with 10 Necron Warriors is 260 points, 20 Necron Warriors 260 points so they actually match in terms of the points. Nice. So let's start comparing their data sheets. Well, the Ghost Arc's moving at 12 inch range, so it's obviously quicker. It's got Strength 6, doesn't really matter, does it? Toughness 6, okay, that's not too bad. 14 wounds, so when you've got the 14 wounds from the Ghost Arc, then 10 wounds from the Necron Warriors inside the Ghost Arc, that's a combined total of 24 wounds. Whereas, of course, the 20 man blob of Necron Warriors is only 20 wounds. And finally, it's got a 3 plus armor save as opposed to the Necron Warriors 4 plus armor save, but that's just, of course, the Ghost Arc side of that. There's still the Necron Warriors inside that, they've got the 4 plus. The only thing that the Necron Warriors have that's better than the Ghost Arc is the fact that they're going to have 20 attacks as opposed to the Ghost Arc's 3. But again, these things shouldn't be in combat. Maybe with the Novik Dynasty you can do a little bit of work, but yeah. Of course, the Ghost Arc profile is just better. Right next, we're on to the unique ability, starting off with that Ghost Arc, the Quantum Shielding ability, so that you can't wound it unless it's a 4 plus, as well as a 5 plus invulnerable save. And of course, the Repair Barge ability, so you have to heal the 3 Lost Warriors in your own command phase. That's with the Ghost Arc. Now, of course, the 10 models within the Ghost Arc, as well as the 20-man blob on the other side of this argument, they've got their numbers as Legion abilities, so you get to re-roll reanimation protocol rolls of A1. That's unique to those units. Now, both of those are relating to resiliency, which is actually our next topic, so we'll wait before we score that one. Let's get on to the resiliency first. So the Ghost Arc has got 14 wounds, toughness 6, 3 plus armor save, quantum shielding. Then the 10 warriors inside have got the toughness 4, as well as the 4 plus armor save, then going up against 20 warriors that have got a toughness 4 and a 4 plus armor save. An easy winner would be the ghost start with the 10 warriors inside, but once you start to deep dive into what a 20 man warrior blob can do as opposed to the 10 man within the ghost arc, well it gets a little bit more complex than that. So first of all, reanimation protocols with a 20 man unit is much more resilient, much more survivable, because of course once that 10 man unit does go down, you can't be using the reanimation protocols anymore. But it also depends on what synergy you're using with the 20 man unit and the 10 man unit on top of that. So in fact we need to go on to the synergy side before we can actually score the resiliency as well as the abilities if that makes sense. So let's start with the common synergy to begin. Of course everything's core here today so my will be done is going to work on all these units, the Lord's Will, the Disintegration Capacity Stratagem for the Gauss weapons, so 6 is to hit will automatically wound, the Solar Pulse Stratagem to remove benefits of light cover, but the unique synergy, first of all with the Ghost Arc, you've got the Canoptic Spiders with the Fabricator Claw Array to be healing or repairing, if you like, D3 Lost Wounds in your command phase. That's with the Ghost Arc. With the 20 Man Warrior Blob, I like to use the Technomancer with the Rights of Reanimation ability to be bringing back D3 Lost Warriors. Now, you can do that with a 10 Man Warrior Blob, don't get me wrong. It's not going to be as effective as it would be with a 20 Man Warrior Blob, because again, a 10 Man Blob could just get wiped in a single round of shooting, whereas a 20 Man Blob they're not likely going to get wiped as easily, and then the Technomancer can use the Rise of the Animation ability. Similarly, anyone that can take a Resurrection Orb, or an Orb of Eternity, so that's your Overlord, your Locust Lord, your Necron Lord, your Catacomb Command Barge, all of those have the option of taking the Resurrection Orb. Again, you could be using your Reanimation Protocols in your own Command Phase, working much better on a 20-man Blob as opposed to a 10-man Blob. Other options, such as the Canoptic Reanimator for a plus one to your Reanimation Protocols role, Again, it's going to work much better on the 20 man blob. And things such as the Chronomancer with a 5 plus invulnerable save from the Chronometron ability, that's going to be working again much better on the 20 man blob. Giving 20 completely separate units that 5 plus invulnerable save is obviously much better than giving it to a 10 man unit that's coming out of a Ghost Arc. Then, one more piece of synergy, in fact, for the Necron Warriors, the 20 man blob, you can actually just take a Ghost Arc alongside the 20 man blob. Again, we've already mentioned from the unique ability section. The repair barge ability so you can be bringing back d3 lost warriors that's personally the way i do it i take my 20 man blob as well as a ghost arc what else have we got for the warriors in fact there are some other things such as stratagems relentless onslaught stratagem so that's a stratagem that costs one command point it only works on core infantry models and you're scoring more additional hits on hits of a six 
that's with the rapid fire weapons only, so only the Gorse Flayers there. And of course you've got the option of the Army of Renown, Cult of the Cryptic, which allows for Necron Warriors, doesn't allow for Ghost Arcs. Now what other options have we got? The Veil of Darkness Relic, that's another big option in fact for the 20 man blob, that's some way to get them across the board. Now you can do that with a Ghost Arc filled with 10 Warriors, but the Ghost Arc's already got the speed, he doesn't really need to use the Veil of Darkness Relic, whereas a 20 man blob on foot, they're moving 5 inches, maybe 6 with a Relentless March Aura, the Veil of Darkness is much usable with that unit. So all in all, I think the Warriors win in terms of, well, synergy, yes. Resiliency, you could argue yes, I mean that one, I'm a little bit tired on the fence with that one. But there's just much more synergy with the 20-man blob, which relates to their resiliency. Right, let's move on to weapons, coming away from resiliency and all that stuff. What weapons have we got here today? So with the Ghost Art, you've got the Gorse Flayer Arrays, 24-inch range, Rapid Fire 5, Strength 4, minus 1 AP, 1 damage. So it's the exact same weapon as the Gorse Flayers from the Necron Warriors, except you can have between 10 and 20 shots, depending on your Rapid Fire range. Then the 10 Necron Warriors that are inside the Ghost Arc, they've got the option of the Gorse Flayers or the Gorse Reapers. Gorse Flayers, we've already kind of just said that statistic, but the Gorse Reapers are Assault 2, Strength 5, minus 2 AP and 1 damage, only 12 inch range. But if you are popping out of a Ghost Arc, it doesn't really matter too much, does it? Now the 20 man blob has those exact same weapons, but now you are losing that speed, of course, unless you're using that Veil of Darkness Relic. But the preferred option at the moment for most of the people that play Necron Warriors is the Gorse Reapers. And because you can get 20 of them with the 20 man blob, I think the Necron Warriors in the 20 man blob have to win that one. Right, let's go on to general purposes for both of these sides of the debate. Go start with the 10 Warriors inside, but well, the purpose for them is to get the troops safely across the battlefield at a pretty good pace on top of that. Now the Ghost Arcs are going to tank a lot of hits because of that quantum shielding ability with the 14 wounds and a 3 plus armor save, 5 plus in one save. And once they have disembarked from the Ghost Arc, that Ghost Arc is free to either stay with them for the Repair Barge ability, or that vehicle could be tying up models, models that need to fire, that are infantry perhaps so they can't fire into combat, whereas the Ghost Arc can because it's a vehicle. Or maybe if it's got Eternal Conquerors or Objective Secures such as the Nihilat Dynasty, it can get onto an objective, be scoring us some points and be a real hard vehicle to shift from that objective. Now as for the 20 man blob, the general purpose of them, well it's a big blob which is going to dominate a key area of the battlefield, likely the no man's land area, the centre of the board. Now optionally you can use the Veil of Darkness Relic with the Gorse Reapers, taking a character such as an Necron Overlord with the Mild Will Be Done ability, perhaps a Technomancer, perhaps a Chronomancer, but getting them across the battlefield 9 inches away from enemy models, you only need 12 inches for the Gorse Reapers, so Strength 5, minus 2 AP, 1 damage, you're literally going to eliminate something big and bad as early as you want to. They've then got the survivability because there's 20 of them, so reanimation protocols is going to be really key, and then you're synergizing them with either you know, Canoptic Reanimators, Resurrection Orbs, all the kind of stuff that we said in the previous section of this video. Right, so let's get on to the advantages and disadvantages of this video. Starting off with the Ghost Arc with the 10 Necron Warriors inside the Ghost Arc. First of all, it's got better resiliency, at least at the start of the game before they do disembark from the vehicle. The Ghost Arcs are absolute tanks. It's got a toughness of 6, this is the Ghost Arc we're talking about here with a 3 plus armor save. The combination of the Ghost Arc and the 10 Necron Warriors has more overall wounds. It's got the Quantum Shielding ability. It's great with objectives secured because it's really hard to shift off an objective. Even if you're contesting an objective, it's going to be really useful. You can fire with the Ghost Arc into engagement range, into combat because it's a vehicle model. And finally, it's a speedy transport to get your guys across the battlefield. The disadvantages however, well it's got less synergy. Whether it's the 10-man warriors that are coming out or just the ghost arc itself, it's going to have less synergy than the 20-man blob. I mean all the things do still work with those units, but you just don't need to use a resurrection orb and say 10 warriors as you would with 20. The 10 Necron Warriors, once they come out, they are less resilient, again because of reanimation protocols and how they work. You've got less attacks overall, so if they do get caught in combat, yeah, you're not gonna have as many attacks there. As for the Ghost Arc with the weaponry, it can only take the Gorse Flayers. There's no Gorse Reaper options with the Ghost Arc, which is the preferred option, in fact, with the Reapers. And finally, we kind of already mentioned this, less models that can reroll ones for reanimation protocols. That's the Ghost Arc with the 10 Warriors inside. As for the 20-man Warrior Blob, well, advantage are better synergy overall, Canoptic Reanimators, Royal Warden, Overlord, Resurrection Orb, there's loads of stuff that's going to interact with a 20 man warrior blob, more models to re-roll ones for the reanimation protocol rolls, they're just much more resilient with the synergy as mentioned, they've got the option of having 20 gorse reapers, which are the preferred option, better used with the Veil of Darkness Relic, they've got the option of the Relentless Onslaught Stratagem, they've got the option of Cult the Cryptic, which is the Army of Renown option, 
And finally, you just got better board control with a 20 man block. When you're spreading these models out over one or even two objectives, your opponent is going to have a real tough time getting into those objectives, especially where you're picking the models that get removed. And once you are reanimating them on top of that, you can be placing them on the other side of the unit. Again, you're literally dominating the board with your unit there. Now, disadvantages, well, you don't have the safety of the Ghost Arc, so these guys could actually get eliminated if your opponent did focus fire on them. The Ghost Arc can fire into combat, whereas a 20-man blob cannot. The Ghost Arc's moving 12 inches, whereas these guys are moving 5 at a base stat. Ghost Arc's have the Quantum Shielding, whereas these guys don't have an inbound save. Toughness 4 with a 4 plus armor save is not as good as Toughness 6 with a 3 plus armor save. And finally, this one's quite a big point in fact, I've underlined it, synergizing does get expensive. Once you do get an Equin Overlord with the Resurrection Orb, the Canoptic Reanimator, the Real Warden, the Chronomancer, the Technomancers, another Ghost Arc perhaps, all of this starts to get really expensive just to facilitate one unit of 20 Necron Warriors. That's the big problem I have with the Necron Warriors at the minute, which is actually why I prefer Immortals over Warriors. But we're not talking about Immortals today, we are talking about Warriors. So this one is probably the toughest one yet that I've had to do. And I knew this was coming, so I'm going to have to make a decision. Which one of these units would I prefer? I know 10 Necron Warriors inside a Ghost Arc is very similar, but they have a complete different playstyle than the 20 Necron Warriors. As I already mentioned earlier in this video, if I was to choose 20 Necron Warriors, I'd take the Ghost Arc alongside them. That's how I personally play, but I've got to select one of these sides today. So for today's video, I think I'm going to go with the Ghost Arc and the 10 inside. I didn't think I would select that, but you don't have to bring as much to synergize that unit. That is the unit, they're done. 10 Necron Warriors in the Ghost Arc, 260 points, you don't really need any more than that. Whereas with the 20, 260 points, like I said, Overlord, Technomancers, whatever else you want to bring, it just gets way too expensive. So yeah, Necron Ghost Arc with the 10 Necron Warriors inside is my selection today. So guys, that is the end of the video today. Remember to subscribe and get involved in that giveaway, of course. Other than that, all that's left to say is thank you all for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.